they have like police that kind of patrol around the university. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, so I hope you have some time to have some break, but uh, okay, let's come back to our intense class. <laughs> so, <clears throat> so last like uh, two weeks, we were talking about the um, push the level flow algorithm, and we have seen like uh, that. Um, is a powerful technique and very flexible. You can use it to solve exact max flow or make it faster when you want to solve sparse cut or embedded matching, which is needed in like in cut matching game. <coughs> also, it works in a local setting too, and we can use it for local sparse cut. And also, um, we, in the dynamic setting, <clears throat> um, I was a bit rushed 
uh, last time, but at least what I want to want you to get is at least the statement of expanded pruning. Um, can one of you try to recall what is what is that? What is statement of expanded pruning? Mm -hmm. When the uh, deviations uh, happens, then we can give we can at most remove d or phi uh, total volume, mm -hmm. and the remaining part will be omega phi expander. Yeah, very good. Yeah, so <clears throat> so expander is not robust just from the first class that we have seen. It's like that you remove some small part and the rest is connected. It is more, much more robust than that. You can remove the over phi volume and the rest is still omega phi expander. And, <clears throat> and we, at least in class, we've seen that uh, at least for one shot deletion, uh, we seen we have seen how to do that, but uh, one can actually extend the technique in class uh, so that if the deletion is coming to you one by one, um, you can keep pruning like you can keep your pruning set um, to grow gradually, and at every time the the complement of the, your pruning set is an expander. Okay. So. It kind of show how how robust expander is. So that is um, <clears throat> that was the last thing, like what we talked about last time. And today we're gonna talk about new things. Um, so if all the details about expanded pruning, um, like you didn't catch up this time, is is you don't need you don't need that. So I'm gonna talk about. Boundary link decomposition. So before that, um, so once we have seen this, we will see the application uh, of it, and then uh, we will see a stronger version of boundary link decomposition, which I say, which is called boundary link expanded decomposition. But before we start, we need some definition. Okay, so let's say that we have a graph, as always, and um, we have some terminal set, okay. some graph and some terminal set. And then um, we want to, like, I want to tell you some notion that kind of measure how good these terminal set are well connected. So I will say that this terminal set is alpha well linked inside G if the following is true. That is, if you look at any uh, two set, so let's say that this is, okay, no. Yeah. Terminal set, there are many of them. And uh, it says that, I said that this is alpha well linked if I look at any set of terminal, let's say this one, A, and this one, B. Yeah. And I ask about a mean cut that separate A and B. So like it might look like, like this. It's just the size of the mean cut that after deletion, no vertices from A can connect to vertices A and B. So this thing should be at least alpha times minimum size of A and B. Okay. So it is just a similar flavor as conductance and expansion and everything we have seen. It's just that here is it's about a set of subset of terminal. It's not about a whole graph. We want to measure how we'll connect this uh, this terminal set R, okay? So, question about, about this definition. This will be a special case of D expansion, right? Where yeah, yeah, right. You can just put for those terminals, D is one. Exactly, very good, thanks, yeah. Right, yeah, it's just that uh, people give it a special name for, for this 
each case because it's quite useful to to think about. Yeah. So uh, the equivalent way to to talk about this condition is just to say that for any cut, if you take any cut in G, like maybe this cut S, the size of the cut here uh, must be at least um, the number of terminal on one side and number of terminal on the other side. This is just equivalent. Good. So note that yeah, so as Chaitanya said, uh, this is just to say that when this is the case, then it means that the, the GD expansion is at least alpha when D uh, is such that is one when U is in T and zero otherwise. Okay. The uh, main cut G A comma B, we are counting edges such that the endpoints are not in the terminal as well, is it? Yeah, yeah. It can contain um, uh, the edges like uh, much further from from the terminal. Yeah. So basically, when you see this, you can see that this thing is equivalent to this one. And once you have seen this, this thing is really like this definition. Yes. Okay. And um, actually, a special case is just if you say that the whole vertex set, the whole vertex set V is alpha wailing, is the same thing as saying that the expansion of the graph is at least alpha. Um, I hope this is uh, fine. Yeah. Okay, good. Also, we can talk about like whether a set of edges is welding or not in the natural way. You can extend this uh, easily. For example, um, you if you give a graph, if you're given a graph, G. What we can do is that we can let's say that we can just split each edge, right, into a node. So I should, for each edge here, we split and we add a node here. Add a node and call it like a split node for this edge. Okay. And then, um, in, and, and I call this G, G prime for, and call this a split graph, and each of these guys is a split node. And I can say that, let's say that Xe is just, it contains all the split node. And um, then you can try to show this actually. That is, when when we set up the graph, at least unweighted, when the graph has conduct tens, at least phi, is the same thing as saying that this set of edges are well linked. So, like, it, does it make sense intuitively at least? And you can, I mean, this thing is the statement that maybe you can try to show, um, like, at home, but does it make sense? Okay. If we once see this split graph, it doesn't Say it again. If we once see this, actually see this split graph in the class, I remember there's somewhere. All right. Yeah, I, I think so. Yeah. I just didn't use the word well linked, I think. Yeah. Yeah, right. As you told, uh, expand as you told, means every edge can send flow to any, any other edge. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yes. Very good. Okay. And uh, yeah, so, and many times it will be more convenient to think of welding set in the flow perspective. 
and this is just to recall things. Um, that is, let's I call it. I said that k. Let's say k is the all to all demand between the terminal set T. Um, what is this thing? It's just um, when when k is the deep product graph, where where um, like the degree at at node u is one for all node u in T. And every and everything L is zero. So, like given T, like if this is a graph G, and if this is T, then uh, the K product graph, the all to all demand is just you know like a complete graph uh, on the vertex set T, where each of these edge is something like. One over t, like the demand between u and v, between any two vertex in in t, is is one over t. Yeah. So. So. This is just old stuff, but I'm I'm trying to recall to you. Um, Suppose that um, you can embed. Um, so know that if you can embed this, uh, embed k into g. In other words, if you can route all to all demand between t inside g with with no congestion, then uh, it means that. Um, for any demand h, such that um, the demand is only between the vertex set T, and if h have maximum degree O1, then then you can you can route you can route h in G with a constant um, with a constant congestion too, right? And that's and why why is that? This is just because, if you recall, like K is the product graph is the like the most well connected graph for for the flow perspective. So here you have that H is um, H is uh, half h half degree less than k, right? Because it has maximum degree for one. And uh, we have seen before that if this is the case, then h also, um, you can route flow in k. Like h is embeddable into k too. But if here you have that k, if k, if you can route auto, if if k is at least like, if k is embeddable into G, then H would be embeddable into G too. Yeah. Okay. All right. So yeah, in words, if you if the all to all demand between T is routable, then any demand between T where each node exchange at most O1 unit of flow is routable with constant congestion. And just to familiarize yourself with the with terminology, um, yeah, you can see that when I say that T is alpha building in G, is up to log factor, is the same thing as saying that the all to all demand between T is routable in G with this congestion. Yeah. It's the same thing. Yeah. So when you think about where linked, it's about cut, uh, cut condition, but you can think in flow way as well. When, um, when, the, con when the expansion is, uh, is alpha, at least, then it means that all to all demand between all vertices is routable with this congestion, or when now is if it is about conductance. Now it's about all to all demand between edges. 
uh, is routable in G with this condition. Okay. Is there a uh, log square and more also in the first statement? Log? Uh, because uh, we are moving from uh, expansion to uh, conductance as well as uh, flow to cut, right? I don't think you lose a log square, uh, but you can try to check this offline. Yeah. I don't think so. No. Okay. And um, one can ask about um, like one can define well linkedness of the terminal set T to be just the maximum alpha such that T is the alpha welding in G, right? So you ask how much T is well linked. And uh, so maybe can you tell me now actually uh, why we can get uh, actually lock in approximation of well linkedness? Log in approximation of uh, uh, appro uh, expansion, right? Yeah, we can get. Actually, we can ask for um, the minimum congestion to route all to all demand, uh, right? This is just multi commodity flow problem to check how much congestion it, it it you need to route all to all demand between T. So you get that congestion, and within log factor, this is the same thing as well linkedness. So, yeah. all right. Okay. So, just terminal terminology, but uh, I think it's a good term to to think about. It's quite quite convenient thing to think about. The next thing is about when I say uh, it's about boundary linked graph. Yeah. So. So many times from now, I will actually talk about something like this. Like you're, you're given some graph G, and we actually think about some vertex set U. And what you, and this vertex set might have some boundary edges here, right? And just like last time that we looked at, I want to look at this graph G breast U. Uh, that is the induced subgraph together with boundary vertices. This is just uh, the same thing that we looked at before. And um, so just to recall, like for e that is for each of these boundary edges, I, I would just think of, like I add this one node here. And I call this these boundary nodes. Maybe. The boundary node here, I, I just denoted by boundary of U. Do we put one node for uh, each edge, or do we put uh, like, do we just take the union of the just the neighborhood set? I we will put one node for each edge. Yeah. So if if you have two edge here, then like I create for each edge, we create one node. For each boundary edge, we create one node, and this thing become two two nodes. Yeah. It's more like a split node. Yeah, very similar to split node. Yeah. Just we just split all the split all the boundary edges. Boundary edges. Yeah. Right. Good. So now, this is just a graph, G breast U. Like it contains G uh, induced U. And uh, together with its battery, what is this? And we will say that this graph, G breast U, is alpha battery linked just if the, the, the battery vertices are alpha well linked in this graph. Okay. 
in other words, um, another way to think about it is just the boundary vertices, you can route all to all demand between the boundary vertices with small congestion, with one over alpha congestion. Or to think about it in another way, you can embed an expander where, where the vertex set of an expander is on the battery vertices. That is like, so like embed an expander here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. OK, so question about this definition, we will use this a lot. When you have a graph with battery, we want to talk about whether this graph is battery linked or not. OK. So now, uh, yeah. Now I will talk about battery linked decomposition. You will see that this will be have, you will have, it will have very really similar flavor as expanded decomposition, but we kind of focus on on battery vertices. So suppose that you are given a, like, a graph with battery here, okay, and you're given some parameter such that alpha is something between 0 and something like 1 over log n. To be precise, something like this. And usually, usually you think of, of alpha to be as large as possible because you want the bodily to be as willing as possible. So maybe it's safe to think of alpha as, as this. So the problem is just this. You're given the graph, gu, with some battery. And what you want to do is that OK, uh, if these batteries are already well linked, what you will return is just that um, you will just return u, like the whole graph, as to say that um, the, this, this part is already like battery linked. But if this is not the case, then, then you will do the following. You will return like like this decomposition will return a partition here some partition okay such that such that for each part gui this is bodily linked so note one thing which is important that is um that is is for look if you look at g uh, u2 it's not just that these guys are well linked because when you partition it like this then and you look at this one these are boundary edges too so what we mean by this is boundary link is that this guy together with this guy are well linked. And the same is true for 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 U1. For U1, you would have that this thing are well linked inside U1. Right. So that is these edges can send all to all flow inside U1. The flow doesn't go out of out of U1, all right? So, so this is the first condition that is for each part here, they are bodily linked. And the second part is that the number of the number of new battery new battery edges, the the the, the orange part here, we want to bow them. It shouldn't be too too big, and how big is that? It's gonna be something like uh, this much. So, thing like um, it is basically 
as big as uh, um, as big as the old. This is just the old battery. So, so the number of new battery edges should be proportional to the number of old battery, but you maybe times alpha, where, where alpha is something that you can choose. Okay. And you will lose some, some factor, uh, but this factor is going to be something like log n when you just ask for existential result, and it can be something a bit bigger but still small if you want fast algorithm. So, um, question about the statement of battery de decomposition. Why do we uh, do the decomposition? Why yeah, uh, it's going to be next, uh, very soon, yeah. So, so, but like, the point is that I want to note again that um, is the intuition about expanded decomposition was that when you have a graph for, for x decom, right? Um, when you partition it, each part here are expander. Um, but for bodily link decomposition, it's just almost the same except that these battery edges can be like are welding inside the part. Yeah. That's that's the only different. All right. This is what's stronger than the other. What's stronger uh. is well. Um, so it's incomparable, right? Because when you want like. If you think about um, um, if you think about expanded decomposition, we didn't talk about uh, the battery edges. So it's like all edges inside this induced subgraph are welding to each other. This that is expanded decomposition. Here is about the battery edges only are well welding to each other. That's one thing. Another thing is that it's about the number of edges in the, the crossing edges. For expander decomposition, the number of battery, the number of crossing edges here is going to be something like phi volume of the graph. But here it's going to be smaller. It's just something like alpha times the, the battery of a graph. And the number of battery from the beginning can be much smaller than, than the volume of the graph. OK. So, um, yeah. Quick yes? For the fast algorithm, uh, does n refer to number of vertices or the number of boundary vertices? So, This is true for sure. I'm not sure if we can make it um, like a, the number of vertices to the uh, little of one or not. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a good question. I'm not sure. Yeah. OK. So by the way, this, before we, we see how to compute this uh, bodily linked or why it exists at all, actually, um, let's see the application. And actually, there are many applications in the, in the literature of approximation algorithms. And people also call this thing well link decomposition, just in case you want to look it up. But I just feel that this, this name is a bit more uh, descriptive. OK, so oh. yeah, let's see why, why this why this battery link decomposition is useful. So just imagine that you, you are given this graph with battery, and you just compute uh, 
the bodily link decomposition. Okay. You have a graph and some battery. Now, let's say I got, got it like this. And let's say that I contract each of each of the part here into one vertex. So what I will get is just kind of three nodes together with like a bunch of uh, this. And the battery vertices are still there, all right? This guy, um, one, two, three, four. And this guy, the battery vertices are still there, but you contract the non-battery node into like each part inside into one node. Okay. So this graph, I call it edge, and it is much like intuitively you think of edge is something that is much much smaller than the whole graph. Okay. Uh, so now we're gonna claim something that is super strong about edge. That is, edge actually preserve cut size between all subset of battery vertices. It's not just pairwise uh, guarantee. It's about exponentially many cuts. We preserve it all. So what do we, what exactly do I mean by that? What I mean is that take any two set of vertices, two set of battery vertices A and B from the battery, so maybe A is here and B is here. Yeah. So the corresponding A and B is here. The mean cut, the size of the mean cut of A in original graph is, will be preserved in edge, basically. So that's a very strong claim. And but how much I preserve within like one over alpha factor, and you should think of alpha as one over log. So within logarithmic factor, we preserve the size of the mean cut between every like every subset of boundary vertices. Okay. So that's very strong, right? Um, like it's not just like. Uh, n square like st cut or something like that. This is like exponentially many cuts. Okay, so now let's prove it. Okay. Um, so one direction is easy. That is to set up the cut size. Like after you can like know that edge is just obtained from from gu by contraction. So you cannot get a new like a new cut which is smaller. So it means that the cut the mean cut in H is at least a mean cut in GU. In other words, like if you get any cut in H, you can find corresponding cut in, in GU. So uh, this direction is good, it's fine. So the non-trivial part is, is actually this this side. And um, how to see this? So to prove this, it's just let's just do something like um, let's look at this uh, picture. So let's say that okay. What I will do is just start from from the cut from the mean cut in GU, right? Let's say this is A. This is B, a set of battery vertices. And, uh, and let's say that this is uh, mean cut, S, the separate A and B. But this is in GU. What we need to, to, the only thing we need to do is just to find like another cut, S prime, S prime bar inside, in edge. That's still separate A and B. And uh, the cut size doesn't is like blow up by just a small factor, right? That's the only thing we need to show. 
Okay, so, um, so it's like actually the how to show this. Not that in the um, in GU what we have is that we we have some compose like some decomposition right something like this. Uh, maybe I draw it like this. But if I can find some some S prime such that it respect the the decomposition. So this is like a this is a G G U one U two. If I can find a cut that respect this decomposition, then that would correspond to some cut in H. Right. So I will find some cut like this, such that this cut S prime doesn't like the size doesn't blow up by a lot. Okay. So, so how to do that is now very natural. Um, so suppose that the um, like maybe look at this one. And now um, let me define um, this. So this part, it has some battery. I call it AI. This is the battery like on the S side. Okay. Like look at, so look at each UI, right? There are some battery uh, on two side, like on the S side or on the on the S bar side. So this is I call this A two and this is B two. Yeah. And uh, and this part I call it C C two. Okay. Actually. So there is a very natural way to, to, to try to get S, S prime actually. Um, so intuitively it should be something like this, right? That is, if you have hmm, if you have this cut S and if this is like a U and like this part like like that. If one side is small, what you should do to make this cut respect you too is that you should just try to avoid it. Like there are just one two ways to, to make it respect you too. Like either you move it like this or you move it in other way. And like the natural way to, to choose this is just to, to measure which side is smaller and try to try to bend your cut in the in the way that's smaller. Yeah. But what ex how exactly you should uh, define what it means by small is just you just should you should just count the number of battery edges here, right? This part is AI. This part is BI. So you should try to choose a site such that your cut size doesn't grow too much. So, so if AI is smaller than BI, you just bend it on the AI side. If BI is big, smaller, then you bend it to the BI side. That's the that's the way to do. So, okay. Oh no. This is AI. This is BI. Uh, AI and BI are uh, right according to the like the endpoint outside you or inside you because it seems there should be like four cases where it could go from could go into you like within S or outside S or like start from S and go into U and land outside S and vice versa. Let me think. Actually, one sec. I 
Right. So yeah, I, th I think this should be just just you. Yeah. So we really just think like um, according to endpoint outside. Yeah, we just divide it into according to endpoint outside. Thanks. So, so the, the, the battery can, can look like this. Thanks. Good. So now, like, let's, so, yeah, that, that's, the, that's the intuitive way to describe the algorithm. And now, now let's, let's now, let me assume that, um, for each UI, suppose that AI is bigger than, if AI is smaller than BI, then um, then what we would do is that we would bend the, the cut like this, right? And now, now let's see what happened. So first of all, um, note that um, AI must be AI cannot much cannot cannot be much bigger than CI. So CI was was the cut size uh, before we, we we bend the cut. Okay, the cut size that that UI contribute before we we bend the cut, and AI is a cut size that UI contribute after we you bend the cut. But now it, I claim that AI cannot be much bigger than CI, and the reason is just because because the graph is barely linked. Okay. So the intuition to see this is just if AI was like a much like really a lot here, right? Then you cannot send flow. Like it cannot be the case that this guy can send flow through UI to the other side. That's um, that would be the bottleneck. So um so that means that AI must be quite small compared to CI. Like, cannot be too much bigger than CI. And by how much, like a one over five, fact, one over alpha factor. Yeah. Okay. So this is just equation, but you, you have to get this, I think. Okay. So what, is, what it means is that, like, basically, once, huh, once we have this, we can uncross uh, the cut S to respect the partition UI for, for every I, right? That is, um, to make sure that S doesn't cross UI, you just, yeah, you just bend it in the right way. That is, here I, I set S to be, to be S minus UI, like this. But if, if bi is bigger than ai, then, then you just set B s to be this much. Yeah. And you can see that after you do this bending the cut for every ui, let's look at how, how, how large is the cut size, right? The cut size is just gonna, gonna be like, um, um, for every i, it's gonna be a mean of ai, Bi, right? And this is at least, at most, a one over alpha uh, ci. But the sum of ci. Uh, yeah. Why do I write this part? Yeah. The sum of ci is just the size of the cut in the in the beginning. So that's why the cut size that we get after bending things is at most alpha times time this thing, one over alpha time this thing. Okay. So, yeah, that proof it, that proof that um, the cut size between, the mean cut between any, between, for A and B, for any set A and B is preserved. So, and you kind of know that 
it it it's just not about like a, the value actually it's about the structure that is kind of if you don't care too much about exact uh, value if you care about this thing up to log n factor then you can just look at the cuts that is that respect the the boundary link decomposition that that already preserve almost everything up to log factor okay and edge preserve really a lot of information about boundary vertices and edge is also small right the number of edges in edge is just the number of boundary node like the number of boundary vertices in the beginning and the number of new boundary vertices and this is this is something like uh, uh, c bound uh, alpha times times the boundary vertices the old boundary vertices so so the size of edge is small it's just proportion to the boundary vertices now like so you can see that this is like what we do is here I call we we call edge as to be something that, that is vortex specifier because we really reduce the number of vertices and edges to be proportioned to to some terminal set here is a boundary vertices is, uh, is a terminal set and edge still uh, approximately preserve all cuts of butter, of the terminal set. Um, so yeah, that's um, that's the, the application of butterly link decomposition. Any question about this? So okay, next, um, let's prove that actually it exists. Um, and the pr to prove that it exists, we will use this generic algorithm for showing kind of the same generic algorithm for showing expanded decomposition. Right? If you recall why why expanded decomposition exists, you just give you given a graph, phi sparse cut. Like if you cannot find one, it's already expander, you're done. If you can find a sparse cut, you recurse on both sides. Just the same, same algorithm, except that now the notion of sparsity is defined with um, bodilyness. So the algorithm would look like this. You're given a graph with battery and parameter alpha. If the battery is already well linked, you're done. But otherwise, you would find a cut, right? A cut that certifies that this battery is not alpha well linked. So the cut would look like, like the cut size is at most this thing. And one, when you find a cut, you just recurse on both sides. Um, so why why do I write like a u intersect s and u intersect s prime? It's just just a technical thing. It's not exactly s prime and it's not exactly s and s bar. Just because like the cut the cut s here contain this battery node, and I, I want to recurse on on this graph with battery vertices. So this is not uh, it's just a technical uh, technical thing. Yeah. But we just really try to recurse on both sides. Okay. And if you do this, then you can see that when you stop, you would get some partition of you. Right? And the only reason that you stop is because this part is boundary linked already. So is what is left to do is just to bar the num to bar the number of new boundary vertices, which is uh, this sum, the boundary vertices for UI 
minus the O1. That's the that's the thing that we want to, to bound. And we can charge them to Yeah, now now we want we wanna charge them. Right. So that's that's the goal. Uh, we will charge the new guy to the old guy. And we will lose some log factor like before. Okay. But um so the proof will like that's the that's a very right intuition. We would try to charge, like when we find something, charge it to the smaller side. And the guy on the smaller side will be charged, like lock n time at most. That's the strategy. Except that there is some, some like, something that makes this analysis more complicated in, in this case. The reason is that, um, so don't look here yet. The reason is that, you see, when we find a sparse cut, A and B here, you find a sparse cut, what happened here is that you create new battery on both sides. So it's like there are some, like the cut that was not sparse before can now be sparse because you create some new demand on the battery. So there are some propagation effect going on. Right. Um, so this is this seems like an issue, but um, once the cut that you find is sparse enough, that is, this is the reason I, I set alpha to be at, at most one over log m. Why is not why I don't set alpha to be one or a constant? When alpha is sparse enough, is is small enough, then. Um, even if you create some new uh, some new demand, uh, this effect is not is not is not like a kill doesn't kill you. Yeah. So so now we will see like a proof um, the, in details and so because of this complication, that's why I need to to really like now like the proof is a bit more complicated. So what I will do is that. I will do some charging argument where I, I start by putting money on vertices of a graph. Okay. And um, whenever we create new battery vertex, vertex, like if I cut it here, I create two new battery vertices on, on both sides. For each of them, I pay one. I, I use my money, one dollar. And then after I use this money to pay, I will move money between vertices in some way. Yeah. And, um, and then um, we will show that the initial money is enough. So if we can, if everything here is true, then what we need to buy is just the initial money that we put into the system in the beginning. Yeah. OK, so, so to, to implement this strategy, we will do some invariant. We will have some invariant. That is, the invariant is that for every battery vertex of UI, it should have this many dollar with it. That's the invariant that I want. Like for like something like alpha log of log of the size of UI, log of the size of the battery of UI. So what, what does it mean? It means that in the beginning, uh, the initial money is something like uh, is this much, and each of them have, has alpha times times this. So that's, and that's going to be the bound of new battery vertices. If I can, if I can like really use this, uh, if I can implement this strategy, right? Okay, so, so now what I would, I, what we need to do is just like how to move money when, when we find a cut, how to, how to pay money and how to move money. How to, yeah, so, so suppose that like, suppose that you, 
like just think like in the beginning that is just one you and then we keep fighting some cut and then there is you one you two and now i i might like recurse on you two and i, I create like you three and you four something like this keep refining the thing so suppose that at some point i look at ui and i and i find sparse cut in ui and and recurse I, then i recurse on ui prime and ui double prime that's the situation so so in particular let's say that this is ui with this with, with this battery and we find a sparse cut here one side is a one side is b okay yeah this is just the battery on one side the battery on other side okay and let's call this cut this is a mean cut c so because this is a sparse cut sparse in the sense of battery linkness then we have that size of c is at most alpha times b times mean of b and a a and b so let's assume that a is smaller than b what we will do is that we will use money on this guy at on a we charge to this guy right so we use money on a to pay for um so what so one thing to note is that um first this part the number of battery of ui prime is smaller why is that because a is like a at most half right and c is like small c is like one over log small so basically if you look at the battery of ui this is the size of a plus c and c is at most c is like c is actually at most like alpha times a right so this is something this is at most uh, one plus alpha times a and a is at most half of of okay sorry a is at most half of the O battery so you have that uh, this is like at most uh, two, two third for sure there's a lot of slack here so in particular um, because of this then if you put log of three over two here you you get like um, this thing for you i prime is less than this thing minus one so the way to think about it is that for every battery node in, in a before cutting it has this much money but after cutting you you only need to have this money this this our this is our invariant so now it has something like for alpha spam you need a dollar right make sense or not uh, okay like are you with me that like after cutting the side the a side is much become much smaller so um so now every guy in a will have some spare unit of money now can you repeat how the money is spent yeah so in the beginning like i have this invariant right the the battery vertices would have this much money okay. so in particular every guy in a here it has uh for alpha log uh, battery of ui okay but after let's look now after we we recurse after cutting 
this thing like each of these guys only need to have what? Only need to have this much money. Like, right? So it has it used to have a lot of money, and now the invariant only only require you to maintain few fewer like less money. You used to have this much, and now you you only the invariant only need this much money. So, so, and this thing is much less than, like the battery of U prime is much less than U. So, so just if you want to keep the invariant, actually you, each of the guy A here has some spare unit of money now. And we, we use this spare money to pay for the, the, the new battery, new battery uh, vertices. So it uh, has at least four alpha spare money, right? At least, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right, at least. Okay. So to to conclude, like after you cut, you know that uh, you can collect at least this much money from vertices in A. Like there are A many battery and each of these gives you four alpha. Right? And to make the invariant holes, you need to pay for something. Um, the money that you need to pay, there are two parts. One is the number of new battery vertices that you get. And there are two C of them. This is some the, the thing that you directly pay uh, for the new, the new battery vertices. And the other part is um, to keep, to maintain the invariant, right? So to maintain the invariant, because this guy, each of this guy now become like a kind of, there are, it, it become battery vertices on, on two sides. And we have that, we have this invariant where every battery vertices, every battery vertex needs to have this much money with it. So to keep this invariant, we have the invariant on U prime side and U double prime side. So each of these guys need to have this much money and this much money on it. And what I would try to say is that the whole thing. This is a. This is only part that we need to to spend money on. Nothing. Nothing else change. But we. What we get from the spare money is this much. So if if this thing is more than this, then we are done, right? We can like we can cut, and we can pay for the new battery purchases, and we can maintain the invariant, and everything uh, now. Uh, like the invariant is maintained, and we can, and, and that's all we need to, to prove. So, so once we have this, like, I just need to show that this thing is less than a for alpha, but now it's just doing math. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like. This, the battery on, on the left side and on the right side is at most the, the number, the, the, the old battery. So, and um, this is the part where I need that alpha here should be smaller than, than this, like one over log. So, so we have that this is at most 4C, but C is something like a alpha, so 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 we are we are done. So you see, like because of this propagation propagation effect, uh, we we need some more complicated charging scheme. It's not as direct as before in like in expanded decomposition, but um, um, yeah, but. 
it's not too complicated actually. Like once you state the the right invariant and try to try to like uh, say that okay, you put enough money on on each node, then uh, then you you're done. Okay, question about about this. So what we have is that now, yeah, we get that each part is alpha boundary linked, and the number of new boundary vertices is something like alpha times this times log. Question. Okay. So next is how to compute it, right? But actually, I will not show it to you because it's it's gonna be like repeating things in in the expanded decomposition lecture. Um, so. What we show here is, is just that like, if you do this uh, generic, problem, generic algorithm of keep finding sparse cut until you cannot find, then you get a bodily link decomposition. Um, so if you want just some polynomial time algorithm for finding bodily link decomposition, then uh, you can do it too if you pay some slightly worse guarantee. And why is that? This is because you can find an algorithm that given a graph, right, you can check if this, like it either report that this is like, the boundary is alpha over polylog well linked. Now there are some, some slack of polylog, right? Or it said that there is a card that certified that this, this, this thing is not alpha well linked. So it, th this is just like the algorithm for approximating well-linkedness of the battery. And we know that we can do it, um, at least in polynomial time. Or if you want uh, in the little one, you can do it in like using cut matching game or something. Uh, so this can be done. But once you have this subroutine, and just apply the algorithm that we just discussed. Keep using this algorithm, keep cutting once you find a cut. Otherwise, it uh, certifies that the, the battery is alpha over polylog well linked. What we will get is just the same, except that like, this thing will be the same, right? Except that each part now, instead of alpha well linked, it is alpha over polylog. Well linked. So, so that's that's how you get polynomial time algorithm. And uh, if you want near linear time algorithm, um, now it would be natural to find like a balance cut. And now the balance nest should be should be defined with respect to to the number of battery. Right, so like try to repeat everything. You you can get you can get nearly near time almost linear time algorithm too. Um, question about this, like why it should work? Uh, So, like basically, you just need to recall the, the algorithm for finding expanded decomposition fast and try to change the notion of sparsity from, from expansion or conductance to bodily linkedness and try to mimic everything there. And, and just because the cut matching game is so robust against all like for all, all notion of sparsity, right? It, so you can you can make it work. Okay. So 
So now it, it comes to the new notion, um, bodily link expanded decomposition. So like you asked before, between bodily link decomposition and expanded decomposition, are they comparable? Uh, they, are, they are incomparable, but we can ask, can we get the decomposition that satisfy both of them simultaneously? That is, uh, each part are both bodily linked and both expander. So this will lead to some new application that we will ne discuss next um, next lecture. But the goal that we will try to show is this. That is, given a graph with battery and uh, some parameter phi, we want to partition uh, the part, partition this u into parts such that each part here, this is alpha bodily linked, and you think of alpha as one over log. So each part here, the bodily are, are well connected. But at the same time, if you look inside the graph, this is uh, an expander, a phi expander. And the number of total number of battery should be something like uh, the old battery plus phi times um, the volume of the, the whole the whole send you. So this is just trying to like you we can just ask for this right like um, it's like a na natural combination of the two things um, and uh, indeed we can we can do it. Yeah. Um, so, so actually, but we actually will show something stronger than this, a bit stronger. But and actually, by trying to show something stronger, it's actually a bit easier to, to talk about it. Um, so the more convenient way to conclude that this part is bodily linked, and this part, this the same part is an expander. There is a way to talk about this in a more convenient way, which is to look at this graph. So I call this thing GU power K here as the induced subgraph with K battery self loop. So what do you mean? What do we mean by that? It's just a graph such that you start with an induced subgraph, GU. And then for each of the battery edge here, um, U and V, what we will do is that we will create, like, for each of this edge, E, we create like a self loop corresponding to, to this battery edge. K times. That's, and the capacity can be like, okay. Here, I, I another way to say this is like a create one self loop with capacity K, or, or create K minus self loop. It's the same thing. Yeah. Uh, okay. Is this graph uh, clear to you? Just it's for each battery edge, I create a self load. K many of them, if this is K. All right. And now this is now this is a claim. If you look at this graph, where so the way sorry the way you should think about this is that alpha. Should be, you should think of it as one over log, and phi. Maybe you should should think of it as maybe uh, one over n to the epsilon, like n to the little one or n to the epsilon. So phi is much much smaller than alpha, 
And so um, alpha O phi is something like uh, interleader one. So this is some some number which is uh, quite like it's more than one, but it's not too big. This is how you should, should think about it. Okay. So if this thing is a phi expander, then I claim that um, you have that the induced subgraph is a phi expander, and at the same time, it is alpha parallel linked. Okay. So this is what I mean by like why this notion is is like convenient to talk about because it implies two things, two things at the same time. So let's start with some inform informal proof. Um, why this is the case? Well, um, just to recall, like a phi expander is just a graph where all two all demand between edges are, are routable with a one over phi condition. Okay. So let's see what happens when, when, when we look at this graph, and this graph is a phi, phi expander. So this graph is such that what? Is such that is a graph, and um, for each of the boundary edges, maybe for each of the boundary edge here, we create a lot of a lot of self loop. Yeah. Okay. So when when this thing is a phi expander, first of all, it's just clear that a subgraph, uh, like the all to all demand between edges of this thing, which is just a subgraph of, of this thing, is also routable, right? Because the only edges that, that we remove, like the only edges that you get you have in this one, but not in this one, is a self loop. And self loop never help for routing. Like it never helped you to, to send flow from, from somewhere to somewhere else. So if if the demand between this thing is routable, uh, like if the demand between this is routable, it then then the demand um all to all demand for, for edges of this is routable too. So so this is a phi expander. And um, you also have an, and now if you look at the the at the 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 boundary edges, what what do we have here? What we what we try to do is like to artificially make each boundary edges send alpha or phi unit, right? Because for each of the boundary edges, you, you create alpha or phi edges in, in, this, in this graph. So, so in, the out, in this auto all demand of, of this graph, you can think of instead of each of this guy send one unit, then you can think of like this guy can send alpha over phi unit of flow. So basically, it means that all to all demand with this many unit between boundary edges is routable with this congestion, with one over phi congestion, because this thing is a phi phi expander. But but by scaling down everything by like uh, by alpha over phi um, the, um, scale, then it just means that all to all one unit demand, the, the usual all to all demand between boundary edges of of GU is routable with with um, with this condition, right? So I just scale down by by this this unit. So so this 